Oh, motherfucker, you can't have my cornbread. That's for damn sure. Because if you try to take my cornbread, part two of my killing spree gonna begin up in here on your ass right now. If you think about my cornbread, begin to taste out your mouth. That's for damn sure. Now, fuck him. Fuck this. Because I'm from New York City, goddammit. Nobody take no cornbread from me. That goes for you and any other you motherfucking farmers wanna try some shit. You fuck around with me, it's gonna be consequences and What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's good, people? I am Maestro Styles with my partner Trey Frazier. Welcome to the Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. Thank you for tuning in with us for another episode. Unless it's your first, then welcome. Uh, make sure you follow the podcast on Instagram at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. Follow me at Trey Fra- at Maestro Styles and Trey at Trey Frazier on Twitter. I am at Maestro Styles, and you can follow Trey at Barbershop SPOR2. Uh, like our Facebook page. Make sure you like on our Facebook page and subscribe to your, the YouTube channel. Then, finally, tell your friends to tell their friends. Tell your friends to tell their friends, and then we can all be friends. Trey Frazier, what's going on, man? Oh, man. Uh, another week in the books, man. Um, good week. Good, good week, um, you know, to start it off. And uh, again, I just want to give a shout out to everybody that showed up last week on our 200th episode uh, anniversary. Uh, We've been doing this going on five years and, you know, this is the you know start of another uh, 100 episodes. Hopefully we're at uh, 201 right now. And, um, you know, hey, man, I'm, I'm just ready to get this thing jumping off, bro. Uh, how about you, man? What's you going sound, on? I ain't going to lie, man. You sound a little deflated, bro. <laughs> uh, well, it's it's not because of the week. Like I said, the week was good. <laughs> it, 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 you know, I, I thought we had some things. And, you know, as, as I think we say most of the time, we, we're continuing to work. We're working. We're working. We're working. And, man, I was working last night. I was trying to do some things related to the podcast, and I thought we was able to jump this off uh, for this episode, but, you know, we ran into a couple hiccups, so uh, uh, we just going to have to keep working. Right. Yeah, that's it. that's it. The work don't never stop, brother. That, 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 that is uh, for Of course. Certain. Yeah. Yep. Myself, just when you think you're close. Well, well, you don't matter. Even when you get it, it's still oh, more work to do afterwards, man. I know. Just when you think you're close, you're so far away. So. Yeah, man. Uh, me, me personally, man. Uh, I'm in a, I'm in a good space creatively this week, man. Um, I, I'm thankful, man. I, I, I made a little money pursuing my dreams the other day, yesterday. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, man, I, I, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm in a good space. That deserves a round of applause, yeah, man. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yo, Stop. So Stop. I'm in a, I am definitely in a creative space. Um, you know, as far as all of my, uh, you know, with the podcast and with the music and some of the things that I'm working on, I actually bought my first stock last week. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, yeah, so we're definitely, um, in a good space, you know, trying to, or I'm not trying, improving and becoming a better, uh, human being for myself and my kids sake. And hopefully when I meet them pearly gates, you know, I'll be a good testament. Hey, man, build up that portfolio, man. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I, I want to build say, up that financial portfolio. I no. want to <laughs> say what's up to uh, Big Cat 303A1 Day 1, who is here in the chat room. What's up? Um, the exclusive chat room known for only our A1 Day 1s. Uh, so, without further ado, man, we can get right into it. Um the Jordan Where Doc, you wanna start, man? Jordan Doc um just ended uh Sunday, episode nine and ten. And um hey man, we can I 
I'll let you give your take because as you can see it, through my title, um, mm-hmm. the food poisoning twelves, not to be confused with the flu game twelves that we uh, have named these shoes. Um, I, I'm a little upset. <laughs> I'm a little upset about uh, how they how they covered this, how they covered this game, this game five in ninety seven or ninety six. What what I can't remember. Ninety seven. Ninety seven. Ninety seven. Um, how they covered mm-hmm. this? How they covered this in a documentary? It leads me to believe that they are lying, and this nigga was drunk the whole time. Yeah, so there's a story out there. I, I don't know if you saw this on the web or saw this in the past someplace, but apparently there's a story out there where they flew to Vegas from Salt Lake City where the Jazz play, and they went out on the night and he got drunk, Mm. And he came back hungover. Yeah. And that's like, that's the story that's, you know, kind of out there. Yeah. When they tried to throw this in our face with the whole five guys and a pizza, yeah. I'm like, that's bullshit. I'm like, really? That's, I'm like, really? That is. And, and you know what? I, tr- I always I've always tried to be respectful in a documentary. If that's what you mm-hmm. say happened, then I, you know. No. Nah, yeah, I nah. don't I don't believe it. I'm man. not buying it. I'm I not buying I, I well, there's there's a lot of things I don't believe about it. Number 1, it's and I and I've I've never been to Salt Lake City, so I'm not going to judge the city because I never been there, but people have talked about this place, particularly NBA players when they go and they play the Jazz. Uh-huh. They talk about it's a Mormon state that things shut down at a certain time, even when it's light outside. Things shut down. Mm -hmm. And then the other part to it, when they said it in the documentary, that there was nobody open in terms of getting takeout, with the exception of this one particular place. Now, I don't know if this one particular place was in the city. I don't know if it was in a suburb. I don't know. But I just find it hard to believe that everything shuts down but this one spot. I, I, I just find it hard to believe that. And then, on that front. And then um, I read that mm-hmm. this place that doesn't close and that was open late was a pizza hut. Now, I read a statement, um, on, and, and it was on Bleach Report, so I guess we always got to mm-hmm. worry about the validity, but I don't give a damn with nobody. Bleach Report has never let me down. I, I, I Bleach Report is legit. Nah, I, I see a lot of people, well, and, and, and it's normally old heads. I, it's normally old heads hating on Bleach Report, but... Um, I see a, um, but they said that they reported that a Pizza Hut guy, the guy who actually Mm -hmm. delivered the pizza, the actual person, and he said, ain't nobody poisoning this dude pizza. And more, and and, and more importantly, if I remember exactly what I read, there damn sure wasn't no five, no five people with him when he delivered the pizza. Now I'm going to go find Bleach Report and go find the article specifically, specifically because, um, mm-hmm. I think them, I think they was lying anyway. I, 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 I think they was lying. Pizza Hut employee. I think it was lying, right? I think that <laughs> nigga was lying. Um, ex Pizza Hut employee who says he delivered the infamous pizza calls Jordan story crap. That's what the headline says. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, guy's name is Craig Fight. Uh, Fight Fighty. I don't know. His name is Craig okay. Fight. Says he uh-huh. made and delivered the pizza. He made and delivered the pizza addressed on the controver- addressed the controversy doing an appearance on 1280 The Zone, whatever radio station that is. Um, the story, and this is the quote. The crap story, the guy said that there was five people. There was two of us. And I didn't even have mm. that many people working at the time at the store. But there was two of us. Fight also said he's one hundred percent certain Jordan was not poisoned by the pizza. Now, of course the dude could be full of shit. Of course he could. But you know what? He ain't. <laughs> he ain't full of shit. <laughs> he's telling the truth. That's what I believe. I believe that they made up this bullshit ass story. You know, if you were poisoned by if you were poisoned by somebody at a pizza shop. Mm-hmm. If you know that you were poisoned by a person at a pizza shop and you Michael Jordan, ain't that the first thing you say? 
Yeah, I, I would think so. I mean, like, the first. I mean, the, even... the fact that the the fact that they held this like for twenty something years. Yeah. Makes me think that this, like, they just thought of something just for the documentary, just so everybody could just eat it up. I'm not, I'm not buying it one bit. You a damn liar. You a damn liar. Yeah. Tim, to, Tim Grover, is that who it was that, that told that story? You a damn liar, Tim. Yeah. You a damn liar. Yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah. I don't believe it. You lying. You lying. So, so here's, so here's the question, right? Mm-hmm. So, what was the shame of Michael Jordan telling the truth about what really happened. If the story about flying to Vegas and flying image. back. It's all about image. Imagine, uh, imagine how the newspaper would eat it up if Michael Jordan, uh, my, if we knew that Michael Jordan came drunk to a game and for, and for a stint of the game in the beginning of the game wasn't good. You know, and God forbid they would have lost. They lost that game, or, or you know, what I'm saying, which they were close to doing. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you know, with yeah, God forbid they lost the game or something crazy like that. Um, that would have been crazy. So yeah, let's lie about it because nobody's gonna find out the truth until somebody found out the truth and then you made up a lie. First, it was a flu, and now all of a sudden right. it's it, it's food poisoning for this documentary. Yeah, and then you had um, us, and then you had us name those fucking twelves, them fucking shoes he wore, the fucking flu game, and they were the food poisonings. Well, nah, nigga, it was the party at Vegas the night before twelves. That's the new name for yep. them fucking shoes. Yep, yep. And and think about it. I, I think I'm pretty good at geography, right? So, if you to fly from Ve- from Salt Lake City to Vegas, that's probably at best the hour flight. So. All you got to do is get your homie or whatever to drive you to the airport, get your private jet, whatever, you know, spend an hour in the air, touch down in Vegas, hook up with some other people, pick you up and then just hit the strip. I mean, you could do that within you could do that within four or five hours. Right. Like that's like like that's real easy to do. Like it's almost as if like I was, you know, driving in D.C. to a party and, you know, driving back, you know, 40 minutes home. Yeah, uh, it yeah. would be no different with that liar. situation. You're a liar. You're a liar, <laughs> Tim and Mike. You're liars. Yeah. So whatever. What, what right. did you take away? What else did you? I was about. Um, well, I was. I was just gonna just to kind of wrap up the whole you know flu slash food poisoning thing. Um, I did see jokes about uh, Carl Malone actually for somehow setting up delivering the pizza with food poisoning in it. Mm. I, th- I thought that was uh, pretty clever, but kind of transitioning to Carl Lone. I think what I took out of this, right? So, you know, Ewan was on the documentary, Isaiah was on, Reggie, um, Gary Payton yeah. did a spot. Um, I'm trying to think of the other cats that, well, obviously, you know, some of the Bulls teammates, they did the documentary piece. They spoke their piece as well. Um, Carl Malone, you would you have thought Carl Malone would have at least showed his face to talk about, you know, some of the stuff. But um, the dude probably petty about losing to Jordan twice. So he, he just declined to, to do any piece on the documentary. Do we know he declined? Or we just believe he declined, which I believe. Uh, there's something. There is something on Bleacher Report. I believe it's either Bleacher Report or another reputable source that said that um, him and Brian. Uh, I was about to say Brian Maxwell. Um, Brian Russell, Russell. Uh-huh. were approached about doing the documentary, and they both declined to do it. Okay. All right. Well, let's 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 address it. Did he push by yep. Russell? Did what he, about Byron Russell? I said, did he push him? Did he push Byron Russell? Uh, he says his bull. When fact, you watch the tape, he pushed him. When when you watch the tape, it does look like Brian Russell is on his way to falling down anyway. It looks that way, and even if Jordan hadn't pushed him. I think he was going down anyway. I mean, there was no way that he was going to stop with Jordan and try to come back. 
it, it was absolutely no way he was going to do that the way he was gliding across the court. Um, it definitely looked like he shoved him. It, it definitely had that look. But, you know, that Jordan, even if he really did it, like if it was something obvious, he would have got away with the call. Yeah. Refs would have swallowed their whistles anyway. Yeah, I think he pushed you know, him. He pushed him. I'm, 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 I'm at... I, Go ahead. I don't disagree with the. I don't disagree with your point that he, uh, you know, Jordan was going to get the open shot, but had mm-hmm. he not pushed him, that would the difference. But that could have been the difference between an uh, open, easy, wide open shot than Byron Russell possibly fouling him and making him shoot free throws or fouling him enough to alter the shot. No, good point. Yeah, I think he, good point. Yeah, he fouled him. He, he, I mean, yeah, that 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 should have been, you know. And let's be clear, mm-hmm. I'm glad it happened the way it did. Um, I'm definitely, I think that's definitely about to be my next shirt, just based off this documentary. <laughs> I think that's definitely about to be my. Uh, but he pushed him. Yeah, he definitely pushed him. It, it, there's no. He yeah. Pushed him. He pushed him. Yeah. He, no, yeah. It, it, it looked like he got him. It, yeah. it, it definitely looked like he pushed him. But I will say this: I think he could have gave him a love tap. And Brian Russell would have still hit the floor, because the his because the way he was accelerating across the court, he, there was no way he was just going to come to a a stop with Jordan to try to you know contain his shot. There, there was just absolutely no way that his body could contort that. He was on his way down regardless of the push or not. Yeah, I hear you. Did you hear uh, Horace Grant was on some radio station um, yesterday? I did Basically, not. Essentially, essentially responding to, um, you know, Michael Jordan and and his takes on the on his takes on the, uh, you know, in the documentary. I read, okay. I, I, read, I didn't. I didn't see it. I didn't hear it. But is this in relation to what they were saying about the book and how stuff um, was getting out? That too. But this was yeah. That too. Um, he he, okay. he addressed that. Um, he addressed, um, you know, you know that we could shoot the fade if it comes down to it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you could have talked to me, you know, I all like those that. types of things. Um, he had a comment about Charles Barkley that reads, in quote, Charles Barkley, they've been friends for over 20, 30 years, Grant said. And he said mm-hmm. something about Michael's management with the Charlotte Bobcats or the Charlotte Hornets. And then they haven't spoke since then. And my point is, he said that I was the snitch, but yet, and still, after 35 years, he bring up his rookie year going into one of his teammates' rooms and seeing coke and weed and women. My point yeah. is, why the hell did he want to bring that up? What's that got to do with anything? I mean, if you just want to call somebody a snitch, that's a damn snitch right there. Yeah. Yeah, um, oh. and, and um, he says he said, he said some other things. Um, he... he he was definitely uh he was definitely big mad um on the uh on the clip that I listened to uh before we mm-hmm. got into the show. He 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 definitely is, you know, and you know, I think um he you know, he also talked about how him and Sam Smith had been friends a long time and um that's how Sam Smith does his um you know his how he goes through his process of investigative reporting is that yeah. he doesn't go off of just one source. He has to have two. He has to have two sources before he reports whatever he reports. So mm-hmm. um, for Jordan to say it was just just calling him out, he felt like it was a personal attack that Horace Grant was the only person called out when he knows that Sam Smith has to have two sources for him to report whatever he's reporting. Um, so he was like, you know, we need to talk, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's been 35 years or not 35 or maybe how long, how long it's been 25, um, 25. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we need to go ahead and have that conversation or we need to handle it a different way. That's exactly what he said on, on, on the clip I listened to from his radio interview. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, hey, uh, hey, I, hey, I, I like that. If they want to, you know, scrap it out, let them, you know, scrap it out. I, I ain't got no problems with that. Yeah, sure. Do you want to hear Robert Parrish's uh, quote? Oh, uh, uh, hit me. Okay. So, uh, Robert Parrish uh, was so, in an interview somewhere, and they would tell. I'll, I'll read with the what I screenshot it. 
So uh-huh. uh, Parrish left for left the Celtics in '94 for Charlotte, where he played two years. His final years in the league was in '96 and '97 when he played with Jordan in Chicago and won another ring. There mm-hmm. he regained an appreciation for Bird's leadership style. What set Larry apart from Magic and Jordan was he wasn't an in-your-face leader like they were. Parrish said he had too much respect for us. If you weren't having a good game, he was more inclined to encourage you or not say anything at all. But Jordan and Magic would jump all over you. In one of his first practices with the Bulls, Parrish botched one of the plays and was amused to find Jordan jawing at him just inches from his face. I told him, mm. this is Robert Parrish talking to Jordan, I'm not yeah. as enamored with you as these guys. I've got some rings too. Parrish recalled at Parrish recalled. At that time he point at that point he told me, I'm gonna kick your ass. I Parrish then <laughs> says, I took one step closer and said, No, you really aren't. After that he didn't bother me. Your reaction. Can you hear me? Trey? Yep, this is Trey's. Yep, this is Trey's uh, weekly internet botch. Uh, well, let me take the time to say what's up to the peoples in the chat room. Miss Mocha Bella, I see you. Uh, RC, what's going on? Fame up at Prospect, I see you. I don't know. I don't know. What, Trey, you still there? Okay, I thought it clicked in. Um, Trey, you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I right, um I was just shouting out the yeah. chat room. Uh, um, no, can, can, give, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Give me a second to finish shouting out the chat room. RC KC, um uh, I said Mocha Bell and Fame is in the chat room. RC, what's going on? Appreciate y'all. Y'all the A one day what's ones good? that continue to get shout outs. Um Jamie Jackson, O L F, what's happening? We see you. Um <laughs> Oh, I didn't know that, R C RC says Parrish is well versed in martial arts. Would have ended, wouldn't have ended well for MJ. Yeah. Oh See, yeah, yeah. And you know what? <laughs> and, and let's be clear. Let's be very clear. Um, as as we kind of um, you know give my I, as I kind of give my overview of the Michael Jordan and his documentary. Um, it doesn't change anything for me. Knowing everything that I, every bit of knowledge that I've gained since. You know, starting this documentary is good to know. Michael Jordan is still the GOAT. Um, I still respect his game. I, you know, everything he's contributed to uh, basketball. Um, but with that being said, um, Michael Jordan was a punk. <laughs> <laughs> like like, like a punk. Like that. And I don't mean in, in the sense of how he played basketball and all that. He was, a, he was the best. And he had, but mm-hmm. I mean, if he wasn't as good as he was in basketball, it'd be some nigga smacking the shit out of Michael Jordan. <laughs> Charles I, I, Oakley. Scott Burrell. <laughs> I, 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 like, I, I don't get, I, 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 I do not understand. Horace Grant. <laughs> yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, for certain Horace Grant. I don't understand, <laughs> I just don't understand why um, that, re- that respect doesn't just stay on the basketball court, that respect that people give Jordan, like let it uh-huh. stay on the court. But you're not about to, and it's like I said last week, you're not about to be talking to me no kind of way. It's just not no shit. You're just not finna just say what the fuck you want to say to me and we're not going to fight. Just It's just not happening, period. And, and, no, and, and no disrespect to Steve Kerr because Jordan did punch Steve Kerr in the face, but let's remember Steve Kerr punched him in the stomach. Prior to that, and 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 do you, and, and you want to hear what the uh, and you want to hear what the end result of him of that fight was? Jordan yeah, calling and apologizing, him. and yeah. them never having an issue since. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. I mean, I I respect it on a basketball level, but if we're gonna keep it a bean, like, nah, bro, you 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 a punk. <laughs> I, I, I'm confident in saying that. Well, uh, he was a well protected punk. I, I, yeah, I think that's yeah. how you could best describe and, it. <laughs> and and he should be for as good as he was as a basketball player. But had he not be that good, I I yeah. I, th- I, I think it would have gone a different way for him. 
in them locker Yeah, rooms. and it was going, and it, and it goes back to what I said last week. Like, you know, that stuff worked because them niggas won titles. Yeah. If them niggas ain't win titles, then niggas will be looking at Jordan like, yo, like, you're not just going to continue to be screaming at me and all we doing is getting to the second round of the conference finals and bowing out. I like, you, a, you ain't going to keep doing this. I'll take it a step further. If Scottie Pippen was the reason why they were winning championships, wouldn't nobody mm-hmm. be taking that shit from Jordan? Yeah. If it was Word. Scott Burrell who was the reason why they was winning championships or, you know, he'd, he'd be chilling. Mm-hmm. He'd be yeah. chilling. Yeah. yeah. Hey, did you know did you know the story about uh Steve Kerr's pops? I did not. That was my next point. I was I I didn't want to talk about Jordan no more. I wanted to talk about um Steve Kerr, man. I, I don't I don't know Is he a Hall of Famer? Let me just ask let me just get to the conversation. Is Steve Kerr a basketball Hall of Famer? Ooh. Um I got to be honest with you, man. It's really, really close. Like, I think he's closer to being one than he is not being one. I think he's a Hall of Famer. And, you know, I, you know, I guess I knew that he was, you know, he, he left, left. um, And it's, and it's not even because of his basketball. It's not even because of his career as a player. Let's, let's be clear about Mm -hmm. it. But well, I'm you, counting. I'm counting him playing, and I'm counting him as coach of the exactly, Warriors. Too. Exactly, exactly. And and then he got another chip in San Antonio. Um, wasn't he a GM in, in Phoenix for um yeah, for a couple build years? Those Phoenix teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, Cause and I didn't know he started in Phoenix. By the way, I, I um I didn't know he got he was drafted by Phoenix. Yes, he was. Yep. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yep. Um, yeah, and went to went to San Antonio the year after the Bulls broke up. I, I forgot yeah, he was on that trip. first team. Yeah, yeah. So he's a four time champion as a player and a three time champion as a coach or two time. Is it? I'm lost. The three, time. three times. Three times. Yeah, three three, three time champion as a coach. And I think he did win Executive of the Year one of those years when he was with the Suns. Yeah, he's a Hall of Famer, bro. He, oh. I, I get, okay. I get, I get that he won't get in as a player. It won't be because of his as a player, right. but more so contributions. Yeah, he's a, to the game because plenty yeah. of there are plenty of people in the Hall of Fame for contribution as a contribution uh, entry. Yep. He'll be there as that. He's a he's a Hall oh, of yeah. Famer, yep. and I don't think people yep. say it enough. I, I just wanted to be the one to say it. Steve Kerr's all yeah. the famer. He's all yeah, the famer. I'm, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at that take. And like I said, I think he's closer to being one than he is to not being one, given his playing career, coaching career, um, career in the front office. Yeah. And all of that combined, I think, warrants closer to you know being in the hall. So, And I mean right um, now. And I mean right now. If he retires, when eligibility comes with his career as <laughs> – and a contribution to basketball right now, he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I think I think that's a valid point, man. Um, I didn't even think about it that way, but, but now that you made me think that, it, it, to me, when you when you add up all the accolades, yeah, it, it, it's definitely um, it'll be because and like Jamie Jackson said in the chat, it's going to be um, more so because of coaching, but it, they will account for. Everything from playing to front office to being on the sideline as a coach. Yeah. Remember, this is the basketball Hall, Hall of Fame. Fame. This isn't right. This isn't you it's know you had the NBA to Hall play. of Fame. It's, right, right. So he he's definitely been a a lifelong contributor, you know, to this game. But yeah. you know, shout out to Steve Kerr, man. Shout, yeah. And you know, getting back to that situation with his pops, man. That 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 was you know to hear that story. Yeah. I, I thought was. The crazy to Which hear. Which I had no idea, by the way. Yeah, I had no idea about it either. But after they kind of talked about that situation, they kind of went into, um, what was it, that game six? Was it game six against the Jazz? Uh, the final year where uh, Kerr hit the shot. Um, or, or it might it might have been in 97. I don't remember yeah, I think what. It was 97. But, but they, had their, they had their interaction on the sideline and said, you know, Jordan was like, yo, Steve, be ready for the shot. You yeah. know, if, if they double me, I'm coming right to you. And, you know, that's what happened. They double team Mike. He got it off the curve and, you know, Kerr drove the shot. And he told him I'd but, be ready. Yes, exactly. He told him he'd be ready. 
But one of the things that I guess one of the people there was asking Steve about was, did Steve ever talk to Michael about their own personal relationships with their prospective dads? And Steve said, no, we really never, you know, got much into that. And I thought that was a really good answer, yeah. um, given how both of their fathers, you know, were deceased in, in the fashion that they were. Well, he looked like so he was I, about to cry telling the story. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know what I'm I, I, mm-hmm. I, I don't blame Steve for, you know, not, I mean, I mean for saying the right answer, really. I, I do believe him at heart, but I, I also think that that probably was a, a, a tough subject to talk about with a, a dude who's also lost you know, his father to, um, you know, something a little, you know, slightly similar. Um, so yeah. that, that was, that was, that was pretty deep. You know, what we need to come up with, we need to come up with a, a top five clutch shooter off the bench. Top five clutch shooter off the bench. Yeah. No. Robert Horry's my number one. Robert, <laughs> Just off the break. Yeah. But can you name four Robert more? H- uh, Steve Kerr, um, and not necessarily in this order. I'm just trying yeah. to think of names that you know guys coming off the bench and drilling shots in in clutch moments. Um, I, I guess when you when you think about the championship teams of the past, um, I, I guess you got to look at Paxton as one with the Bulls in the first three peat. I think you think about him. I think you think about a guy like. Who was who was the guy off the bench for the Rockets in the mid nineties? Was that Vernon Maxwell coming off the bench? Do you do you remember? Yeah, he came off the bench. I don't, I don't I don't recall him I don't remember him for being a clutch shooter though. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to think of I'm just trying to think of guys on championship teams. Um Mike dude. Miller. Mike Miller, Kyle I Corver. guess was another guy. Kyle Corver. Um even though I I don't yeah, think I don't he won a championship, but well, it's not um, about it's, it's not necessarily winning championships. It's just hitting clutch, being a clutch shooter, right? But I'm uh, but I, I I'm referring to championship yes. teams only because it's easier to you know pick some names out. And Kyle Corver didn't get a ring with the uh, Cavs. I don't think he I don't think he was on that team that year. I thought he was still with Atlanta. Oh, I don't know. I, I just I just I just feel like when I think Kyle Corver, I think Cavs. I don't think Jazz. Atlanta. I don't think any of the other million teams he's been on. Uh huh. I think Atlanta because of that sixty win Hawk team the year before the Cavs won the chip. Okay. But um, but yeah. Um, I, I was just gonna. I, I said Mike Miller. Um, when he was with the Heat, Shane Battier. Um, you know, made some clutch shots off the bench. Um, trying to think of who else. I mean, those are the those are the names that really come to mind. I think we can come up with a better list than that. But I I think about it in my free time if I have it. Yeah, is J.R. Smith no. a clutch uh, shooter? No. Okay, okay. I, I don't think he is either. I, yeah. I was just checking. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you want to get into some coronavirus arrest? Uh, yeah, it was a bad week for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was a bad week for that, man. Um, so, if you don't mind, I got the names right here. Mm-hmm. Um, Cody Latimer with the uh, Washington Redskins uh, wide receiver. Um, oh, Denver Bronco fame. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, he. I forgot if he was with the Broncos. Yeah, yeah. Well, he got booked on charges of assault in the second degree, uh, menacing, illegal discharge of a firearm, uh, prohibited use of a weapon, and reckless endangerment. And I guess they're moving forward with some kind of trial or something. I, I'm I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but. Those charges seem pretty serious for homie. Yeah, well, um, uh, Chris Mullen, Casey says, um, I, 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 we'll come back to that. <laughs> I, yeah, 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 yeah. And Chris Mullen started. I, I was just about to say he, he was a starter. Yeah, yeah, he don't he don't count. I think every everywhere he was he's been at he, yeah, started, he started right. Yeah, yeah, he don't count. Um, okay. Yeah, um, I I don't know what's going on, y'all. I I I think I think the. Um, <laughs> I think the the moral of the story is is that uh, niggas need to go to spring training or whatever it is that they do around this time. <laughs> they need to go there. <laughs> well, we hey, we supposed to be social distancing, right? 
<laughs> well, um, <laughs> I mean, well, we if it was only in- well, if it was only two people in the house that he tra- <laughs> that he shot his gun in, <laughs> I, I, then then ideally, do you think he had a face mask on when he went in there and shot his gun? I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe man, he was but... social distancing. I don't know. Um, I'll say this in all seriousness. Um, I hope it works out for you, bro, because uh, I. <laughs> Uh, you know, there's always another side to the story, but um, I can only read the headline right now. And well, and 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 that's the beauty of a trial. At least, you know, uh, the one positive thing about it is he gets to tell his side of the story, and hopefully, you know, exactly. the prosecution, whoever's defending him, is gonna, you know, lessen whatever punishment it's gonna be, or if he even if he gets no charges. Um, uh, put see, up on him. Yeah, I disagree. With, I disagree. He won't get to tell his other side of the story in court. <laughs> you said he, he won't get to? No, he will not be, get, be able to tell the real story in court. Well, that well, that's different from telling his story. It not, it doesn't necessarily have to be the real story. I yeah. think he'll get. To, I think he'll get to tell a story yeah. in court. Yeah, because yeah, nah, court is the worst place to tell the story. Um. Ed Oliver. So, Ed, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was I was just getting ready to um, get into the next couple of um, individuals that you know got in trouble with the law over the weekend. Uh, Seahawks cornerback Quentin Dunbar and second year player from the New York Giants cornerback DeAndre Baker uh, both turned themselves in on Saturday after arrest warrants were issued for them back on Thursday. So here's the breakdown. Baker was accused of using a semiotic firearm on Wednesday to rob multiple people along with the help of Dunbar with a hundred, I mean, not a hundred thousand, eleven thousand dollars in cash plus stolen watches, other value valuables that were probably round about 60 K mm-hmm. something like that. Um, that that's some, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's not, it's, necessarily to the point of you know killing somebody or you know shooting somebody but theft is uh that's not good i mean none of this stuff is good but you know you know you me you know what gets me about that story um and quentin Uh, dunbar of redskin fame just if if people weren't familiar who quentin dunbar was um today when i was on twitter and i found out about this um story um, mm-hmm. The update is is that DeAndre Baker was released from a Florida jail after setting the bail for two hundred k, which means, uh, which means that he has resources to bail himself out. And yeah. I, I guess I don't know that he bailed himself out. And if I'm not, um, and if I'm not mistaken, um, that two hundred k that bail that was set i think you only got to pay like 10 percent of it to actually be released or there's a percentage of it that you have mm-hmm. to pay in order to be released and then uh you, you know you're responsible for the rest of it i'm not yeah. i ain't never been in that situation so i don't know if that's true or not just something i heard um right. but it says to me dog you had resources you have resources to bail yourself out why are you robbing people <laughs> why are you robbing people if you like it's not like these niggas are not broke. Even, even well, sp- specifically Quentin Dunbar, who's been in the league for some time, this nigga mm-hmm. not broke. Like, I, I, I get that he might not be, you know, in the tens of millions of dollars, but the nigga's far from broke. Uh, Why are they out I don't, here robbing I, people? I, 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 I don't I don't know, bro. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why niggas got like I, I all know, this man. money... And I don't I don't know. I mean, I, I don't I don't know how these niggas are, niggas you know, mean. handling the quarantine and, you know, the social distancing stuff. I mean, is, is it because we can't do a lot of things? And, you know, so, hey, maybe, you know, go out, steal some jewelry, pop some tags, you know, like, uh, uh, come on, man. You know what I've like noticed? Th- you know what I've noticed a lot about athletes and, and I don't, not necessarily you know, NFL caliber athletes, but just athletes that I know, mm-hmm. um, they spent they they spend a lifetime trying to uh, make it, trying to you know make it to the bright lights in the NFL and all that, 
And when yeah. they realize, when they realize that they may not make it or they've given up on trying to make it, mm-hmm. these motherfuckers don't be knowing what to do with themselves. Like you can only work out for so many hours in the day if you're not working yeah. out for something. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like uh, with them not having, not being able to go work out and, and be around their teammates and coaches and things like that that mm-hmm. there are a lot of football or athletes, not just football players, athletes that might lose their way in this shit. Oh, of course. No question about it, man. And I never it's- and I never thought about it until I just got finished listening to you say I you, you just I don't know, it don't make sense. It just doesn't make sense why um DeAndre Baker and Quentin Dunbar and Cody Latimer and um and even down to, I'm not I'm not familiar with Ed Oliver but he popped up Ed Oliver uh defensive tackle for the Bills why are they getting caught up in this type of shit now when your ass supposed to be in the house yeah niggas is bored man it just it, they they can't take the quarantine like do they that's the uh, that's but, the only explanation I have for it but here's the thing though <laughs> but th- but for me it's like all right, um, it, what what do you do besides football or, or training? Like, would you is that what you think you're supposed to be doing? Like, is that the shit that you go? See, I wonder, and and, and I, I want yes, I will. I wonder, um, I wonder where these kids came from. I wonder where I don't, I don't want to call them kids because they grown, but. Um, like where is DeAndre Baker from? Um, I where is Quentin Dunbar from? Um, I, would I think imagine Mocha Florida. Bella's in the chat. Mocha's in the chat. She said their lawyers are trying to drop the charges. That's the latest here in Miramar where it occurred. So um, I think these guys are from Florida. I mean that's what I'll assume. But, um, but mm-hmm. I said to say is that these they don't strike me as somebody that's uh, from the suburbs. And and for that to, and I say that to say is that like is that all you knew was football and robbing motherfuckers like is like I I, I, I man I, I I wish for so much better man I I wish for so much better I don't I don't know and I hate to sound like that dude that's um you know shitting on a young black man but come on bro y'all y'all I refuse to believe and if I'm wrong I'll accept it. I refuse to believe that these niggas is hurting financially so crazy that they, mm-hmm. they, they got to run up in people's houses and rob people. It's possible, man. It's possible. I mean, listen, 100%. listen. I mean, I mean, if 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 for folks that don't know um, the story about Clinton Portis and his financial situations, y'all go ahead and Google it or YouTube it. There's you know, there's all kinds of stories about um, how Clinton Portis almost took his own life because of decisions he's made with particular um, people who were supposed to be paid to watch his finances and didn't successfully do that for him. So, I mean, not just Clinton Portis, but I'm sure that there are a lot of athletes who go through this type of thing where they have... Um, they they have accountants on the side, and whether it be family or somebody on a on a more professional level doing it for them, sometimes man, they they take your money, they you know they misreport things, they you know they they fatten the checkbook, you know, <clears throat> on in the checkbook, not so much in the bank account per se. So on and, that logic, on, so yeah, on that logic, so so on that logic, um, mm-hmm. do you believe? That um, and I'm and I'm obviously we speculate. Do you believe that that, that uh, Cody Latimer? Um, well, Cody Latimer is not necessarily being charged for for robbery. Let's deal with uh, DeAndre Baker. Dunbar and uh, DeAndre Baker. Do you believe that they did this out of necessity? Um, I I man, and and he's what Just he's a second year play. second year player oh. and Quentin Dunbar. I can't imagine ever seeing a you know, like a ten million dollar contract, right? Yeah, like that. It, it it's it depends, man. You know, second year players are trying to get, you know, their feet under themselves financially. And in the case of Quentin Dunbar, you would think he he's financially 
stable. But again, like I said earlier, you, you just never know with these guys. You, you never know how these guys um, manage or mismanage their money. You never know who they hire to be responsible for that may rob them, you know, may jerk them around. So uh, it, it's just hard to say. But if you're basing it off of logic, if it's off of logic, man, um, no, it's, it's, it's hard to believe that. You know, guys that play in the NFL um, that get these, you know, million dollar contracts go through this type of thing. But when you break it down to the nitty gritty, it's possible. You know, they just yeah, they they, they just like us, man. We, we, we got to we got to manage our finances with what we bring to the table and what we bring in our households. They got to do the same exact thing. They just doing it on a higher scale because they pay for longer than ours. You know, it it doesn't it doesn't escape them from, you know, you know, going out in the streets and selling crack or dope or whatever. It doesn't stop them from doing that if they, you know, fall on some hard times because, you know, athletes could do that. They can they can fall on some bad times if they're not careful with who they hang around, who they partner up with, who they have to be responsible for their money and, you know, get paid to do that. It, 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 It could all go to the wayside man yeah it, it could go left field in a hurry if you're not careful yeah yeah i hear you the uh, hear here's you. the other cat i, I don't want to miss this other cat that uh you know got busted by the law so um bill's defensive tackle um uh, defensive lineman i should say ed oliver yeah, he's a tackle mm-hmm. uh re- arrested on charges of dwi and unlawful possession of a weapon um so okay this this sounds like he was in his car and he, he made a couple of bad choices and it just so happened he had a weapon with him and, you know, they had to take him in, whatever. When you say uh, bad choices, a what, couple of bad choices, what were the bad choices in your, uh, your summation? It sounds to me like alcohol, obviously, um, was, was involved here and... Um, being caught with the weapon and I'm I'm sure that this is not the first time he's driven around with his weapon on his person. I'm sure this isn't the first time, but you know, you make one mistake, one mistake could turn to two. It could turn to three, four, mm. five. So um but this but based on this, um I I believe and without knowing, you know, the full extent of the story, I believe he could beat the DWI. Um, it's that weapon charge that's really gonna gonna be the deal, and you're and you're in New York State, so that's uh, this, even a well. Bigger it deal. happened in Houston, though. Oh, it happened in Houston. Oh, yeah, it it's in hometown. Houston. Yeah, it happened in okay. Houston. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So maybe he. Yeah, maybe he'll, you know, find a way to beat that. Yeah. Or or maybe not. I don't know. Um, can I add some perspective? Uh, with What's a, good? With a story. What's good? So, um. When I was living in Simple City, I had a neighbor named Man. I don't know his real name. They called him Man. That's what I called him. Um, and um, every Friday, mm-hmm. every Friday when it's when it's uh, hot outside, every Friday night you can count on him uh, sitting in his car, uh-huh. being outside and drinking, right. playing his music. Right. So one Friday. Um, p- the police came around for whatever reason. They might have just been doing their rounds, and they arrested. They addressed it. They arrested him mm-hmm. for driving intoxicated. Now, the spiel is the or the, mm-hmm. the the caveat, if you will, is that he wasn't driving at all. He had his car on <laughs> while he was playing his music. Yeah. And he was drinking in his car, but he got arrested for driving intoxicated. I wonder, I just wonder, mm-hmm. um, if that was the uh, if that was the story of what happened with Ed Oliver. Like, was he was he at home? Was he somewhere parked with the car on, drinking? And then y'all wanted to see what was going on, and then y'all seen he was just chilling with the engine on. And decided yeah. to arrest him for being drunk. I wonder. I wonder. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's, it's possible, man. Yeah, um. I wonder. I just it, wonder. It's. Yeah. It's. It's possible, man. Um. 
like I said with the other cat, hopefully this dude gets to, you know, tell the story and, uh, you know, beat this thing. I hope all these guys find a way to, you know, at, you know, at, at, at worst, you know, do some kind of community service of some kind. Uh, I hate to see young brothers be, you know, locked up in a in a system that's already got too many brothers in it. You know what I'm saying? You know what's sad is that every all four of these players involved are not high high enough profile at uh football players um yeah. maybe deandre baker got a little more clout because he's a second year guy and he was a high you know he was a first rounder um yeah. maybe he got a little more a little more cachet but mm-hmm. um a little more leeway yeah. yeah maybe but none of these four players have high enough profiles if they just if their respective teams decide hey you know what we don't want to deal with this this could, mm-hmm. this this could be a problem for all four of those players, man. And I I don't wish that on them. I hope that, um, like you said, I hope it works out. However, it works out that you yep. know they can keep getting their money and you know not be into that bullshit. Um, yeah. But I, it's 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 not looking on my end. It's not looking good for either, all four of them players. And the person who has the less uh, likely to not be shut down in a negative way is DeAndre Baker because he's so young. But I don't like this for any of these players involved. I, I just, I just hope for the best. Yeah, and again, we're we're just talking about in terms of um, possibly being cut from the team because yeah. I believe that at the very least, three of these guys have a, have a chance to get cut because of this, you know. Because of the stupid news that happened with yeah, it, so yeah. you know, as far Same as like life is concerned, ass in the house, please. Yeah, as as far as like life is concerned, I mean, of course we we don't want these guys going to jail, you know, for you know long nobody, periods of time. I don't think nobody going to jail. Yeah, I, I hope not. Well, man. no, I take that back. I, I take that I hope back. Not. Quentin Dunbar and DeAndre Baker are in trouble. Yeah, hell, no, Cody I mean, Adam is oh, in trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of the four, those are the two that those, are more in trouble. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, they're in trouble. Yeah, I uh, yeah, prayers, prayers. I hope, I hope that work out for y'all, man. Um, yeah. in lighter news, um, I saw that Charles Woodson was tweet uh, trending, and when I clicked on it, there was a conversation about the all-time top cornerbacks of all time. And hmm. Charles Woodson, um, it it seems to be the consensus that Charles Woodson is the fifth best cornerback of all time. Um, the, the, list, the fifth, the fifth, the consensus list okay. is the consensus list is, not, and obviously other people, you know, put their their you know their own list, but the consensus list is uh, yep. at um, in no order: Dion, Daryl Green, Champ Bailey, hmm. Rod Woodson, hmm. and then Charles Woodson. Okay. Um, I think Darrell Revis deserves to be in the top five. Over Charles Woodson. List. Over Charles Woodson, yes. Yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah. Obviously, I know Darrell Revis, and I get the whole marketing behind why somebody would put him there. Mm-hmm. I, I think I gotta go with Charles Woodson though. To stay in the top five, or yeah, just saying that there. he's to stay there. He's a top five. I think I no, I, I, no, I, I I'm leave. with you. I, I do think I do think that um, Charles Woodson is um, well. Then who else am I going to take off that right. list? And you talking in, about Dion? You said Daryl Green, uh-huh. Rod Woodson. And oh, Rod. Uh, um. Yeah. See, I don't. I don't. I don't recall watching Rod a lot. Yeah. Too. Yeah, hey, I was a Steelers fan. I watched Rod. And yeah, he played for the Ravens in his older in his older age, but more yes, I, yeah, I remember he was on the safety. Yeah, yeah. So, so in your opinion, is Rod better than Darrell? Yeah, in my opinion, yes. Huh. Okay. Okay. Wow. So that means Darrell Revis is number six then. Um, I ha- I'll say yes for right now. I- I'll be honest; I didn't take time to think about who would be. You know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. Um, I saw somebody. I saw somebody putting Sean Springs in the, in in the action. I was like, man, if you don't get the fuck out of here with that. <laughs> and that's not to say Sean Springs was trash. He wasn't trash, but come on. Nah, I I don't know. I don't know if he had the same impact these other guys yeah, had yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, he wasn't trash. You know he, just, he just ain't no top five cornerback. 
Yeah, right. Right. And shout out to Sean Springs from Silver Springs, but Champ barely. Um, no, Champ. Champ is there. Champ is in the top five list. I see. Um, mm. Yeah. So I just want. I just wanted to see what your take was. But you, if oh. just just for sense of closure, you got Dion, Daryl, Champ, Revis, and Charles Woodson. Yeah, I think I'm. I'm gonna leave Rod out. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna leave Rod out only because I've uh, I've I've seen Darrell play, I've seen the others play. Um, probably not Daryl Green so much, but I do know that Daryl Green is well respected um, throughout the league, and he, he's I mean he's played what twenty years, didn't he? Yeah, he played a long time. So yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm gonna stick with that five. Okay. Okay. And then we could, you know, we could we could rap about it another time. I mean, is it is it too early to even consider Richard Sherman at this point? Um, in top five, yes. Okay. And and I'm confident in saying that Richard Sherman is in the decline. Mm, oh yeah, there's no question about that. Yeah. I mean, we watch the Super Bowl. We <laughs> yeah. we we, under, we yeah. understand that. Right. So then we t- and not only not only watching the Super Bowl, but watching that r- wide receiver. I forget who it was. Tell mm-hmm. tell people in in you know in media that he knew that he was going to bite. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So we we'll, we will do another another poll real quick. Another a poll per se. So there you go. You hey, can, speaking of stuff on Twitter, mm-hmm. uh, I'm j- this is really nothing important, but I'm I'm just looking at oh, Twitter. Not, I'm just look- we are officially in non important shit mode. Uh, I'm I'm just looking at Twitter and Jermaine O'Neal's name is trending and come to find out it's talking about 15 years ago today, which I don't I can't understand why they're saying 15 years ago today when the malice of the palace I thought was a regular season. Um, I thought that was a regular season game yeah, where that so too. that happened. In fact, I'm pretty sure but, it was. But um, they're showing clips of when Jermaine O'Neal slid and knocked this nigga out on the on the side of the court. You you remember that joint? Yeah, I remember it was yeah, it was the Madison in the Palace. Um, I mean it's hard it's kinda hard for me to respect that to respect that tweet because they're wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're definitely wrong about yeah, it wrong. being fifteen years ago today, for yeah. certain. Yeah. But this is this is this is mostly of what I see on my timeline is this video of him sliding down the sideline of the of the court and knocking dude out. This was this this was I guess this was the point of the fight after Ron Artest got in the stands and yeah. you know did all that. And after they was trying to calm it down a little bit, and then when niggas started you know coming onto the court from the stands, that's when it kind of revved back up. Yeah, Jermaine clocked him. Jermaine clocked him. I don't even yeah. know who it was, but he clocked him. And I oh yeah yeah yeah. 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 He, Caught him, boy. Yeah. He, he caught him really good, man. All right, so I don't, um, I don't know the uh, the reasoning, or um, I want to say it was. I found it on Hoops News uh, at Hoops News on Twitter. If I'm saying that handle right, if I remember mm-hmm. that handle correctly, um, and I don't know the and see. Tell me if you can tell me if you can pick out the um, the relevance for these ten players: uh, yep. Joel Embiid, uh, Jokic. Carl mm-hmm. Anthony Towns, Ben Simmons, Jason Tatum, Donovan mm-hmm. Mitchell, Devin Booker, mm-hmm. uh, Trey Young, mm-hmm. the, uh, Bam, Bam, whoever his last name is, the cat from the Heat, and uh, yep. Pascal Siakam. What is the? What do all ten of these players have in common? Uh, I think if I had to take a guess. If I had to take a guess, I got two guesses actually. Okay. Um, one is is that they're all international players. Um, that's Trae that Young? was my initial thought, huh? Trey Young. Well, that was my initial. Oh, gotcha. no, no, no. I, I was saying that was my initial thought up until you said um, Devin Booker, because I don't know if he's international or not. I don't. Colin Anthony yeah, Towns true. is international. Um. Well, I I think his I think his mother and rest in peace to his mother. But yeah. I thought she was Puerto Rican descent. Nah, she's, she's definitely from Puerto black. Rico. I, she's definitely black. Okay. Well, Jacqueline. one of his parents one of his parents is Hispanic. Okay. Okay. I, I don't I, I don't I know. know which one. I I used to think it was the mother, but I I, I could be wrong. I know about Ben that. Simmons is from Australia. 
And Australia. I, I and B is Tatum from Tatum. Africa. Yeah, um, I don't know I what Tatum is. Tatum is American as far as I know. Tatum, I think Tatum's American. So, yeah, that that, that wipes my theory out there. Yeah. Um, but the only thing that I... You know, and Siakam is from uh, Cameroon, I think. Yeah. Um, but the only other thing I can think about is, is these guys... These are, these are all young, up-and-coming um, potential stars slash superstars. Okay. Uh, the future, the future of the league. Okay. When, I mean, when, when you think about it, that's the only thing that really comes to mind. Okay. Well, the 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 uh, question is, you can only keep three. Now, which three would you keep, and why? Which three I would keep? And I why? would keep. I would keep, yeah, because see, you, you, there's a lot of big guys on that list there. Um, um, one, two, three. Am uh, I right about that? Um, three. I mean, because uh, I would, I would consider uh, Bam a, sw- a swing. I would uh-huh. consider uh, Bam as a three, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay, but and, more. There's a lot more front court guys than there is back court on that list, right? Your front court, yes. There's only three front court guys. Well, it depends on how you feel about Ben Simmons, but um, only three back court guys. Three. I mean, he plays oh. point, but I mean, it depends on how you feel about that. I know he's listed as a right. three, but he plays point. Right, right. Um, the three that I would choose out of that list right now, um, I would, I would have to go with Embiid. Mm-hmm. One, um, number two. Um, number two, I, I gotta go Trey Young. I'm I'm sorry that 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 dude is just ice cold, ice Trey man. That that dude is he's gonna be something special. I think. Um, I, I would go with him. Number two and number three, probably need a a, a wing guy. Um, well, now, let's be clear. We're not talking about building a team. We just sure talking, yeah. sure. Sure, if I had to draft three of those ten guys, I'm I'm just thinking, man. Um, and chat room, feel free to post your three. Give me so I'm gonna let me run down to ten one more time. So okay. you said Joel and B, Carl Anthony Towns. Right, hold on, I read it yep. for you. Hold on, I read it for you. Uh, Joel and B, uh-huh. Jokic, uh huh, Carl Anthony Towns, yep, Ben Simmons, mm-hmm. Jason Tatum. Mm-hmm. Donovan Mitchell, Devin mm-hmm. Booker, Trey Young, mm-hmm. Bam out of yep. uh, Bam and Pascal Siakam. Okay, all right. So here's my three: Embiid, Trey Young, Jason Tatum. Those are my three. Okay. Um, why? Why? Um, well, and I understand this is not necessarily talking about building a team per se. Mm-hmm. Um, but Joel Embiid, um, as a center, he's, you know, he's going to give me the outside shot. He's going to play the post. He's going to play down low. He's going to get me a double, double every night. Um, Trey Young, he's going to give me, you know, at at very least 25 a night. He's, he's going to give me that. He's, he's going to give me the assists, um, eight, eight assists per game. He's going to give me that. And Jason Tatum is one of those up and coming wing players and, um, if anybody wasn't paying attention before this pandemic, Jason Tatum had almost a eight or nine game stretch of dropping 30 points a game. Um, and, I, and, and I get he probably had one game in there where he had like 20 points, but he, he, had, he was on a tear mm-hmm. um, before the league had to shut down. So I'm, I'm looking at that dude like, yo, like. He he kind of reminded me of a, a guy that could, you know, potentially take over a game when the game needed to be taken over and, you know, could give me a, you know, hit me that last shot if I need one. So that's why I'm going with those three players. Okay. Um, I agree with you, except for Embiid. I'm taking mm-hmm. uh, Jason Tatum, mm-hmm. Trey Young, yep. and I'm taking Devin Booker. You taking Devin Booker? I'm taking Devin Booker. Um, mm-hmm. Slept uh, on. I don't. I, I don't know that he is. Um, I just know he's at a team. He's in a team that can't get it right. So, which um, is probably why he slept on. Yeah, but yeah. Um, we, we see him though. I don't. I don't 
fuck with Embiid. I, I just don't. I, I I think I think all this respect the process and uh, uh, all that the process and all that that was a good marketing ploy for a overrated player. I don't think he's ever going to be. I don't, and I don't think he's ever going to be that that guy. I just don't. Um, man, overrated, overrated player, man. Well, because the hype was, the mm-hmm. hype was is that he was going to be, uh, and and I guess by default, in in the lack of big men in the league, he's the best big man in the league. But um, he's not dominant. He's not a dominant big man. Period. He's just not. Uh, he's uh, describe d- d- describe dominant. Um. I will tell. I'll, I'll give. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you the moment where I, in my mind, where I realized he's not a dominant big man. Um, mm-hmm. So this was. This was. It was this year actually. Um, and it's that. It's funny because all I can remember is Charles Barkley Ooh, and Shaq. I know what you're talking about. I know um, where you're going. Charles with Charles Barkley and Shaq going on him about it at, at the halftime yeah. game, um, where the Bama was. Uh, he was having a, a regular game. He was just having a, uh-huh. a regular game, not a spectacular game. Just a regular game, and um, I forget who the player was, but somebody held him up, and then he threw a a shot over the, you know, threw it over the top of his head, and it banked in, and he celebrated yeah. as if like he did something great, and it was like, dog, you threw a shot over the back of your head. What are you talking? Like, why are you celebrating? Like, you did something crazy. And, yeah, and it was yeah. that, and, and and then in addition to the uh, amount of three point, uh, you know, him shooting, I, I, you know, I get it, but it, the type of dominance that I'm re- expecting from a big man, I don't mm-hmm. think you should be shooting threes, bro. I, you know, I just don't. I think he shoots too many threes. Um, and his rebound numbers, I can't remember a time where he's had double figure rebounds. I can't remember it. Um, really? And and maybe I'm tripping, but every time and cuz I, I but every time I'm looking at his stat line and I don't I don't have it by, you know, mm-hmm. his it's always 7, it's always like 22 and 7 and you know 25 and 8 and, and it's like jo- Wait, Joel and B? Joel and B. I might be wrong. I'm just talking about when I look at stat lines. Joel Embiid is average. I, uh, nah, we, well, we about to, we about to yeah, check we, this out right If now, I'm cause... wrong, I'm wrong. I'm only talking about, I'm not talking, because I don't know his stats. I'm only talking about when I look at stat lines through ticker tape or when I watch him play. Uh-huh. Uh, um, yeah, you can look that up. Um, so I don't yeah, really, I'm, you can look that up. I, I, don't I, really, I don't really rock with Embiid like that. Um, I know no. that, but I know in my three, uh-huh. I know that Devin Booker will shoot your face off. I know that Trey Young will shoot your face off, yank you, dish uh-huh. you. Like he he does he does what he needs to do on offense, and I know Tatum has the um, has the potential. Yep. To become a big boy in this league, he slashes, he takes the big shots. Um, mm-hmm. He's willing to take over if if need be. I I, I those are my three. Okay, here's Embiid stats. He's averaging 23, 12 and 3. Right now. So, right or, now. Or, yeah. I mean as it as, you know. Okay. I, I'm just like I said, I don't know. I'm just looking at I'm just talking about when I watch him play and when I see his joint going across the uh the ticker tape. I, I He's soft. Let let me just let me just let me just he's not as he's soft. To be the best right now, big man right in now, the game. Right now, yes. Right now, to be yes. The best I agree. Big man I would agree. Game, he's soft. He's soft. I, 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 I would, I would agree with you there. That um, up to this point, he has shown, uh, uh, he has shown a level of softness. Um, up to this point, um, I, I still think he's got some potential. Um, I, two things I thought you were going to say while you didn't want him. Bead. I thought you were going to mention the injury history, and two, oh, nah. I, I thought you were going to mention that one game he had this past year where he scored no points, and niggas was giving him smoke for that. Well, you know what? I'm glad you mentioned that because if I remembered it, I would have added that to my argument. Because if you're the best big man in the league, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, bro. You can, you got to at least be able to get to the free throw line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I, I, I agree with you, man. I, I agree with you 100 percent on that. But um, 
But yeah, I I I just need defense, you know. I, I and I appreciate the, you know, the offense. I mean, and, but is he you know, really that offensive. good at defense? Um, yeah. He, I mean, he blocks shots. He gets rebounds. I mean, I get you. I... You need it. You need a guy like that, bro. I mean, in, in a league that scores a lot, you, you're gonna need somebody to stop somebody. I feel like. I feel like if you if you're talking about having a defensive presence, you'd be you'd be better off with a Stephen Adams. Um. Yeah. Okay. If you're talking about defensive presence. Okay. I'm not saying no, I'm, I'm, not, mean, I'm not at all suggesting that Stephen Adams is better than Joel Embiid. I'm not at right. all suggesting that. I'm just saying that if 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 you're picking Joel Embiid because you're saying. Um, you know, I want def- defensive presence, and I get your your I, I get you're not excluding that. Mm-hmm. I get that you're adding his offensive game as well. I'm just right. saying that if I got to pick three, he can go. Uh, okay, all right, he can go. I mean, he can go. All right, his like like because especially in today's league, his the defensive presence that you're speaking of, mm-hmm. that's not even super required, and that and you can tell and and when it's required of him, I don't I don't. I don't trust him because he's soft. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still think the potential is there. Okay. I, I, I mean, still... yeah, it's your list. I mean, it's your three. Um, yeah, I mean, and watching and after watching him lose to Toronto last year, and the dude was crying in the court in the tunnel, walking I mean, off the court. I, I, I ain't gonna hold that against him, though. No. no, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that he shouldn't have. Mm. What I'm saying is, is that, I mean. He showcased that it hurt that much. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I remember when niggas was talking about Dwight, you know, being the best in the game and all that at the time when Dwight was Dwight. And every time, you know, niggas would lose, you know, Dwight would be in the locker room all smiles and stuff. And one complaint about him was, was that that nigga wasn't angry enough. Mm-hmm. He like. He, he he didn't want it, you know, yeah. bad enough. Like he yeah. didn't he didn't show emotion after you know losing a tough game. At least with Joel Embiid, he at least she, he showed like this loss hurt him, you know. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back stronger, you know. I'm I'm gonna work on my game. I'm gonna you know do all the things I need to do. At least we see that, and at least we can still keep the narrative that hey, you know, we appreciate you showing that emotion. We appreciate you being pissed off that you lost the game the way you guys lost it. I don't so, know. I don't know that. that. That's where I'm at with that. Yeah, I hear you. I don't know that crying means that I'm gonna come back and improve and be better. And I don't. And again, if we're be, if he, I don't see that he he's better last year than this year. No, not at this point. No, I mean, and 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 quite frankly, the Sixers have been a disappointment. Yeah. Um, up to this point, even though they're you know. It's not like they're, you know, 12th place in the conference. I mean, they're 6th place in the conference right now, a, but that's but not they're that's not where we team. had them. They're just a regular team. They're just yeah, they're just a regular team. Yeah. They're re- a regular team. Um, um I'll tell, tell you what hurt them. Um trading not trading JJ Redick, but not resigning JJ Redick, I think hurts them a little bit. And Signing washed up as Al Horford and Jimmy Butler, because <laughs> that because that because that dude looks he he looks done and Jimmy Butler gone. Jimmy, yeah, right. I, that, I, I, that's I, it. I mentioned him. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the the most important that's call, it. really. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, losing him. So I want to read RC's um, three. Uh-huh. RC says Embiid, Jason mm-hmm. Tatum, and Ben Simmons. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I hate that. That's an interesting. That's I, that's an interesting. I mean, and I, I, I get it. Uh, we still trust in the process and believe in that Ben Simmons is going to acquire a jumper, but it ain't gonna happen. Um, let me <laughs> say what's up to uh, BS Three Radio, J Ron, and uh, the greatest from South Central. What's going on, everybody? I got one last topic. I don't know how many you got left. Um, if, I got one. Okay, um, well, if you will, I mm-hmm. would like to get into some uh, good old social media beef. Social media beef. Let's social do it. Social media beef. So um, there was a, I'm assuming, because I, I didn't have time to get the entire backstory, 
Um, mm-hmm. I'm assuming that there was some sort of a poll between uh, who was a better wide receiver between Michael Thomas and Devontae mm-hmm. Parker. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, um, so um, <sighs> it so obviously, um, you know, based on stats and all those other types of things, uh, mm-hmm. Michael Thomas was uh, – you know, essentially called the better report, uh, better receiver. Um, so I guess at some point, uh, I'll just I'll read the exchange on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, this this obviously leaves some part of the story out, but uh, this starts with Michael Thomas uh, yep. responding to Devontae Parker. For you, yes, go run some numbers up, then you could talk. I lapped you, and you've been in the league longer than me. First rounder. Uh, Devontae Parker responds, got some hard mm-hmm. feel, got some hard feelings. Over, oh, I'm sorry, I can't read. Got some hard feelings there, brother. Let let me get targeted 300 times a game. This is that's Devontae Parker responding to Michael Thomas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Thomas. In other words, you weak. They don't even put your name in the same sentence as me. Remember that. Mm. Uh uh, Michael Thomas goes on to say, you still not going to do nothing. It took you six years and 17 weeks to have a good game. Get the fuck out of here. Blame your parents, not the quarterback. Oh, snap. Um, yo, Devontae, yo. <laughs> pa- Devontae Parker uh, s- responds with quit crying. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, Michael Thomas responds with, you heard what I said. Mm-hmm. Um Basically, uh, and then Michael Thomas kind of ended it off with, you can't even get a seat at the table. So, um, obviously you feel, and, and I and I get it, and, and, and I'm not going to disagree with you that Michael Thomas is the better receiver, but mm. in Devontae Parker's defense, um, he hasn't had a quarterback his entire career. Uh, okay. And All right. and to add injury to, and to add to that to, to mm-hmm. add to that point, um yeah. Michael Thomas is the only receiver option, you know, at you know as far as wide receiver in New Orleans. There's no, no there's no uh competition whereas Devontae Parker had um oh, mess it, Kenny Stills at one point, but it was a younger guy that I'm thinking of. Was it um, Albert Wilson? No, uh, it wasn't Albert Wilson. But uh, no, nah, because oh, I, um, Landry, Landry, yeah. And so my point is, is that he's had these, he's had uh, prospects, receiver prospects that he definitely had to compete with on the mm-hmm. field. I mean, um, as far as so, um, I guess what I'm getting at is, is that, um. I guess we should. I guess it's the time to get into the conversation about um, how quarterbacks make wide receivers, or vice versa, how receivers make um, quarterbacks. Do you think? Mm-hmm. It, do you believe that Michael Thomas is getting those targets because he's just the flat out best receiver on his team, um, or because Drew Brees is? Drew Brees, like is is it a chemistry thing? Is it a is Devontae yeah. Parker going to be just as good if he plays for the Saints? Well, let me let me start with Michael Thomas first. Um, and, and before I get into that, I, I I really don't care much about the beef. I get it's interesting well, it's and all real. that for them. It's to, not real. It's I mean I don't. No, think I, it's know. Real. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. It, it's just it's like come on, like y'all two receivers in different classes are arguing about their skill set and all but that. Let's like, be clear, come on. But, but but to add to add to your thing, let's be let's be clear yep. about why Devontae Parker feels like he's in a different class. He feels mm-hmm. he's in a different class because he doesn't get that um he don't got that quarterback love. You don't he, got Drew Brees, basically. Well, even if he had it's not not necessarily Drew Brees, a quarterback that's gonna throw to him rig like right. that amount of times. To make right. an impact, right? So he's he he's taking shots at uh, Ryan Tannehill, Ryan Fitzpatrick, well, uh, Josh Rosen. I like it. I, I mean, I, let me. 
Well, I, no, I, I don't think he's taking a that. shot. I don't think I don't think he's intentionally taking a shot. I guess that's the way it would spill over. But I don't think he's taking a shot. I think he's just saying that if I had a quarterback that would throw to me the way that Drew Brees throws to you, uh-huh. I would be just as good. So I wish I could pick one or the other, right? If it's Michael Thomas because he's the number one receiver, he's the best receiver on the team, he's a number one receiver. Or is it because you got the Hall of Fame quarterback in Drew Brees and the way he throws and all the records he's broken? Um, I, I hate to say it, but I, I, I got to go with both. I, I think both are equally um, – both instances could be why he's so great. I mean, other than DeAndre Hopkins and Adam Thielen, we talked about the best hands in the NFL. Um, Michael Thomas has some of the best hands in the NFL. So you can credit that to Michael Thomas himself. Um but the fact that, like you said, he is like the number one option. He may be the only option in New Orleans, which is why he gets so many targets. He catches so many balls. Um, Breeze, and I've watched I've watched a lot of Saints games over the years. Um, Breeze hits this guy in the numbers. And when he doesn't hit him in the numbers, he hits him in his hands and Michael Thomas catches him. He catches everything. Yeah. I, I I wish I could pick one or the other, but I think both are mutually um, on the same level. I think it's a combination of Drew Brees is a great quarterback, so he has that at his disposal, and he's got some of the best hands in the league. Yeah. Man, I hope – well, I'll tell you this. I hope um, – because Devontae Parker was considered coming into the league. He was, cause he was touted to be mm-hmm. a very good receiver. Okay, you know, so right. I, I hope they figure out something with uh with with uh the um quarterback they just drafted. I, I well, you know, they, they might, you know, Devontae Parker may be right. Um, I I will give him that respect. Yeah, and and if you look at examples of previous receivers that were touted high, didn't you know really get the love or didn't really get the stats because of the quarterback they played with, I would look at somebody like a Demarius Thomas who was drafted by the Broncos, I believe. And, you know, the first, I think the first year or two, um, you know, what, what, what was average at best. And then Peyton Manning comes along and he's a top five, top three receiver in the game. Well, I would say top 10. I wouldn't call him no top three in a game when Peyton Manning was there, but I'm with you. Yeah. So maybe Devontae Parker's, right maybe he if he gets a better quarterback um throwing him the football we 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 might see um we might see some results yeah, yeah. i do want to make another comparison though too um and I, and, I, and i think it goes to Devontae parker's point about about michael thomas just being the only guy um look at pittsburgh when y'all had a b so when a b was getting all the coverage and Juju was taking advantage of that. Juju put up numbers. Um, there's really nobody on the Saints that's a Juju yeah. right now. Yeah. You know, so I think Devontae Parker also looks at that and says, you ain't got a number two that's, you know, a reliable guy. I mean, but but it could also go to the advantage of Michael Thomas and saying that, yeah, they still doubling me and yet I'm still catching everything. Right. Right. So. Right. You know. Yeah, the you know, I always I always um I will always advocate a little social media beef when it's just sports. So, let me get into this whole NFL thing with uh I don't know if it's an adjustment to the Rooney rule or if it's just something that just came up with, but this was breaking news by NFL Network's Jim Trotter um a, a few days ago. And they're saying that the league and the owners are discussing potential incentives for franchises to hire black coaches, basically. Mm -hmm. Black Mm -hmm. coaches, black coordinators, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And the incentive is more draft picks. Um, 
and I'm and I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but basically that would be the incentive to getting you know black coach get black coaches hired. How would they be able to do that? Though? Um, well, I don't know how they would be able to do that, but I can tell you one thing. Um, I don't think that this solves the problem of the disparity with the amount of head coaches, um, black coaches in the NFL right now it's three black coaches. And then you got one Hispanic coach in Ron Rivera down in DC. That's almost 10% of the league. Um, that's not good enough when just what two, three years ago we had about eight black coaches in the NFL and it pro- it was that one off season. I guess it was last off season where Marvin Lewis got let go by Cincinnati. Um, Steve Wilkes was let go after one year in Arizona. Vance Joseph was let go by Denver after three years. And it at that time, I remember us having a conversation about this. This doesn't look good. I mean, the optics didn't look good for three black coaches being let go. And there was nobody to replace these guys. Now, Brian Flores came on, but it still wasn't enough to the point where it got back to that 20th, 25th percentile of the league. Mm -hmm. Um, To me, this doesn't solve the problem. Um, The real root of the problem is, is how these white owners um, go about their business, Um, how they hire people because of who they know, um, more so than what they know. We talked about Joe Judge getting that job with the Giants. Mm-hmm. Joe Judge wasn't a coordinator. He was, what, the wide receivers coach for the Patriots. Right. We talked about um, Cliff Kingsbury getting the job with the Cardinals the previous offseason. Cliff Kingsbury had terrible records in college mm-hmm. before he got hired to you know coach the Cardinals. Um, we go to Matt Rule. Um, a, another college coach where you had guys like Eric Bieniemy, Byron Leftwich, and, and a few others who were offensive coordinators in the league not even get a sniff at an at a open opportunity. Yeah. So I, I think it comes down to the root of the problem, and that's the ownership. And I'll classify it again. It's white ownership at the top that still have the thoughts of it's okay to hire your people because they're your people and not because they're qualified or more than qualified to do the job. I, I, I think there's something there that needs to be addressed. Um, I, I disagree. Um, um, be, I disagree. In theory, I disagree. Um, mm-hmm. The reason why I think uh, nothing's going to change is just because I don't, I don't know how they would be able to give somebody draft picks for hiring coaches. That's why I disagree. Um, but in theory, you did now. Now let me. So just so I'm clear, you you disagree with what in particular? I disagree that this wouldn't. I disagree that this wouldn't work. I this idea of giving you draft picks for hiring black coaches would okay. work. I don't think it's going to change anything because I don't understand logically how you could give somebody draft picks for hiring coaches. Okay. So um, to my point, um, it's one is not about hiring head coaches; it's about hiring coaches in general. So position coaches, assistant coaches, all those types of things. So okay. it's so if you can, if if you're telling me. That all I gotta do is hire a um I don't know, an offensive line coach, and you're gonna give me a six round pick for that? Yeah. We could hire somebody, we could bring in a black dude for that and give him a, a, a low coaching position just to get it for a draft pick. That's it that is too much incentive for um uh for lack of a better term, low coaching positions, low rope coaching positions. So the, but the reason why it won't change anything, at least in my mind, is because mm-hmm. um, so unless you're talking about offering having more rounds in the in the draft or how how I just don't see how you could um, systematically give 
more draft picks? Does do people lose draft picks? Because if you're talking about the draft, then do you lose draft picks for not hiring? You know, for not hiring black coaches, or does it happen in the supplemental draft? And even if it happens in the supplemental draft, there are a certain amount of uh, um, rounds and a certain amount of players available. I somebody's going to lose some a team is an organization is going to lose out of a draft pick just because they didn't hire a black coach. That's not going to work out. So that would lead to the point that. They shouldn't have this incentive at all, then. Right, but in theory, mm-hmm. um, that would work out because all black play, all organizations would do to hold their to at, in in min- at minimal just hold their draft position right. is hire a black coach. We and would I mean, we would have th- we would have thirty two black coaches. We would have thirty two. We would have thirty two black coaches in low role coaching positions. We would have a we would have we would have a special teams coach in Oakland. We'd have a a backup quarterback coach in in Jacksonville. We'd have mm-hmm. a uh, offensive line coach in in uh, I don't know Kansas City. We'd have you know what I'm saying. We would just have black coaches getting low coaching roles, and it would probably end up being a dead end job because they don't believe in them no way. They just hiring them so they can get draft picks. And this, and that's why I say it's not going to work. And that's why I say that the root of the problem it it, it goes back to the owners. Right, like, but it's but, come on. but to cut like, you why off, can't, well, but but to, but to cut you off, mm-hmm. in theory, it would work. Now, I don't think it's going to change anything because I don't think it's going to change anything because again, if you give a a team an extra draft slot, an extra draft mm-hmm. pick, then somebody yeah. loses out. And there's no way that that organization that loses out is just going to be okay with, oh, I lost out because I did, I, I hired the person who I thought was best for my organization, who happened mm-hmm. to be so, white. So is this, in your opinion, a short-term solution or a long-term solution, theory, a, theoretically? Um, well, in theory, it's a in theory it's a solution if it worked out. But the problem is the problem is is that that solution. Is a terrible solution. Like they might, they might get away with it for mm-hmm. a year or two, but that, mm-hmm. um, but that team that loses out on a draft pick yeah. because they thought the mm-hmm. white person was the better for their job, they're at some point going to protest because them six rounders and seventh rounders yeah. are the type of people that build. Fra- they build franchises. So um, just as I mean, just as as much as a first rounder could, those supplemental guys, those they build the the uh, foundation of a team. So mm-hmm. you telling me I got to lose out on one of those picks just because I thought this white dude was better for the job. Yeah. And then a year or two, we're going to come right back to the table and kind of have the same conversation because in the end, long term, this is something that is, is just not going to, it's just not going to stand long. It's not going to have much life to it, Yeah, which is I, why I kind of go back to, I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna circle around and go back to to the owners. Why can't Why can't we have a scale where, hey, if you start at the low end of the spectrum, let's say you were let's say you were wide receivers or a running backs coach. Okay, after those positions, after those like um, um, coaching situations, then the next level up would be offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. Assistant head coach, that kind of a ranking. You talking about like and then after that kind of based on performance? Yes, but not necessarily diminishing the performance part of it. Um, and then, and then after that level, then you got you know the head coaching position as you know the the the, the top position, and and if you want to talk about the general manager position also as well, now we're talking front office. Um, positions. Well, well, let me ask I don't know what's the lowest. Let me ask you a question instead of I, I, I kind of shot you, Bill. Is this based? Is this a? Is your is your system a system that promotes people based on promote based on performance or based on time put in? Because, mm-hmm. well, I ask you. I ask you that before I before I give you my point. Is it no based- uh, both? Uh, it, it it should it should be both because. 
you can be a wide receivers coach for five years and we can rate your performance during those five years. And if we feel like, okay, you had the number one offense, you've had the number one, number two receivers in the league for that, you know, amount of stretch. Okay, let's bump you up up to offensive coordinator and we're going to keep you there for, you know, however long we feel like we need to have you there for. So let's but say the offense. But, but hold on. Let me, and, and, right. I, and I'm cutting you off because we, we come to I, we come into dialogue. Um, what if the offensive coordinator is the best offensive coordinator in the league? You said what if he's the best in the league and he don't want to be a coach? Or he hasn't been, or for some reason he can't become a coach, and there and, and we have those reasons why people. Uh, well, if he doesn't, well, if he if he doesn't want to be a coach, then he can he can stay offensive coordinator. I mean, it's no different than somebody in construction who wants to be uh, a superintendent but doesn't want to move up to vice president. If you if that guy wants to be superintendent, then he can stay superintendent. So how does that affect? It's it's it's, 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 it's the same thing with. Um, offensive coordinator. So how does that affect wide receiver coaches' uh, progression in the career? Um, it's. It, I mean, it's. It's a good point. Um, and and again, I I, I think it, it. You could probably compare it to like I, I brought in the construction example. I think people have been in positions. Um, you know, laborers, carpenters. Um, these guys have been in those positions for long times, and because there was someone, um. You know, in their way, they weren't unable to move forward within that particular organization. So they go to other organizations to try to do that. They could do that in the NFL. And granted, there's only 32 of those opportunities to do so. But guys can but guys, there's still opportunities for position coaches to to say, hey, I want to be a coordinator, but we got the best stamp coordinator in the league not going anywhere. So. I'll go try out for this team and try to create my opportunities there. And um, if it works out, cool. If it doesn't work out, then it's going to be right back to square one. So just so I could – so for clarity, yep. your, um, so you're just saying make a owner hire a black person at a low-level position. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm, no, I'm saying talking about in, in order because if the goal is, and, and, and I, again, I'm still asking for clarity. If yep. The goal finding the solution to having more diversity in the NFL coaching ranks is what? Oh, it's it's hiring guy. It's hiring black individuals who've done their time as position coaches as coordinators and putting them in that head coaching spot okay and i and i and i and i I gave examples earlier joe judge was a wide receivers coach and nobody heard of the guy and yet the giants decided hey let's hire him as head coach and nobody ever heard of the guy so let me be clear meanwhile meanwhile byron leftwich has been a coordinator for a couple of years in Tampa. Eric Bieniemy has been a coach with is a has been an offensive coordinator with the Kansas City Chiefs for a couple of years. Meanwhile, his precedent, um, the people that preceded him, got head coaching positions. Doug Peterson was hired. Um, the dude with the Bears, Matt Nagy, was hired as a coach. This is Eric Bieniemy's time, and and. The dude won a Super Bowl with the with the best offense in the league, and and yet he's you know nobody even reached out to him for I don't know if it, nobody reached out to him or not, but the fact that he's not a head coach at this point is ju- it's just mind it's just mind boggling. Um, I think you I, I I think I think um I think you're missing the point of or or the um. You can't. They can't see me. The air quotation point as to why they're adding incentives to uh, make people hire black, higher diversified coaches. Um, the reason why they're doing that is because owners aren't hiring black or uh, or you know black coaches. Oh, I That's, know why they're doing. Right, that. right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me. I, I got, let me finish my point real quick. The mm. reason so. In turn, when I asked you what is the solution, and you said 
hire coaches. Just hire them because it's their time and things of that nature. Well, clearly, okay. clearly that's not working because if that was working, people like Byron Leftwich, Eric Bieniemy would have jobs mm-hmm. because it's their time to get coaching positions. So the okay. reason for this uh, this addendum, so to speak, these incentives is to incentivize mm-hmm. white owners to stop being racist and give black coaches their due when it's their time to give them their due. So, yeah, but it shouldn't have to be incentivized to do that. Sure, that's my point. Sure, but my point is is that we're not going to change the mindsets of white owners who own their teams in a privatized corporation. So how do we, if we're trying to change the diversity numbers, how Mm -hmm. do we change the diversity numbers? Because obviously they're not doing what they should be doing to help diversify numbers. So how do Mm -hmm. we diversify numbers? We have to incentivize them. You're saying we shouldn't have to, and I agree with you, but we're talking yeah, we about shouldn't how, have to. But we're yeah. talking about how to change the issue. We're not talking about trying to change the minds of racist white owners who've been sure. racist. For it's, it's, for, after but for me, it's not for me, it's not genuine. I mean, don't try if if you're if you're a white owner, don't try to act like okay, now you 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 care all of a sudden now because no. you have an incentive to do so no it no it's not that we care and it's not that they care and it's not and it's not even really proven to be that they care we're incentivizing you so i'm going to do what you said because you're doing something for me it's a business deal mhm you know what i'm saying so yeah whoever whoever came up with this rule that i don't think is going to work but their attempt to diversify their numbers is to mm. It's like, hey, you do something for me, diversify these numbers, we'll do something for you by giving you an extra draft pick. So it's business. It's it's a in theory, it's a good idea because all business my you know, the model that I've been told yeah. is that good business is when both people benefit benefit from the deal. You're not gonna make me if I'm a racist white owner, you're not just about to keep pulling my arm and say, hey, you better, you better draft. You better hire a black quarterback. You better have, you, I'm gonna hire a black coach. You better hire a black coach. You better, I ain't got to do nothing you say because it ain't nothing you could do to me if I don't. No, sure. But uh, again, um, I, I don't, I don't think that, like you said, it, it sounds more like a, a short term solution, but. After a couple of years, it, it, it's just not gonna. It, it's just not gonna work, and we're gonna have this conversation again so, in, the, in the next couple of years. So I guess. So I guess just to close, put a close on the conversation. Your yep. solution is: a white people stop being racist, hire some black coaches. No, but I know. I, I I explained it. I explained the system. If if if, if guys are. If guys are position coaches and they've been position coaches for a while, and I'm not just talking about blacks, I'm talking about I don't sure. care what race you are. Sure. I'm just talking about the position that you're hired to do. If you've been a position coach for a long time, your next level up should be offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, assist head, uh, assistant head coach. It should be on that level. After that level of coordinator and assistant head coach, it should be the head coach. And then if that head coach decides in a few years, hey, you know what? I want to go to the front office. OK, he can go to the front office that 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 shouldn't be, you know, too much of a big deal. And even if you want to go to the general manager's position in the front office, um, there's people that work in the front office that aren't necessarily the GM. You could have the assistant GM. You could have other positions that are on the lower level of that um, pyramid. But. I, I think people should. I, I think within those circles, people should be able to work their way up. Sure. And I'm right. not just talking about black people. I'm talking about any whatever race you are. Sure. People should. People Including should be white. able to. Including yeah, white. people should be able to go from from position coach to coordinator to head coach, not position coach to head coach. But define deserving. Hmm. Define the you said they should they should be if they're a coordinator and it's their time, mm-hmm. they should be able to move up. But define they should be able to they should be able to get they should be able to have the opportunity to go get that head coaching spot. But the they should pe- be able 
we get that sure, opportunity. But, yes. but again, the people who decide whether it's Eric Bieniemy's time or Byron Leftwich's time, the people who mm-hmm. decide that, right, are white racist owners who could decide in their mind they don't. Sure. It's, it's not their time. Sure. So again, why, so, why can't but, but why can't a system why can't a system be put in place for that though? If we're, to, we're we we just got through I'm talking about, about an I'm incentive for. I'm about to tell you why that they why why that system because what says what what is the criteria for it's their time and a, and, and that does that the answer to who does who makes that criteria are the owners or the people who who do the I, I I get I get that I get that I'm just saying why can't a system be put in place to where there's a structure. If you're a, a position coach, your next stop should be coordinator. If you're a coordinator, your next stop should be head coach. Right, but the answer that's all that's all that's all I'm saying. I know, and I don't and I don't know the answer to that. I'm well, just saying I do know I, the answer to that. The answer to it is is that the people who make that decision because here's the thing. Let's say you let's say you make it a time thing. Like if you've been a a uh, uh, a running back coach for three mm-hmm. years, you should be right. moved up to offensive coordinator. What mm-hmm. if that owner says I don't want him to be an offensive coordinator because he's a good running back coach, or because I don't like the way I don't like his philosophy to, for for the entire team. I like what he does at running back. But I don't right. like what he does as an offensive coordinator. His philosophy as an offensive coordinator. You're telling me because he's been here for three years, I gotta promote him? No, I, I didn't say that he had to promote him. Okay, I'm saying that I, I didn't say that he had to promote him. I, I I I thought I said this earlier. So in in construction, if you work as a laborer and you want to move up to superintendent, but because you got the best superintendent that you know since sliced bread. And you can't get to that spot, then what do you do? Hey, there's other organizations that are looking for superintendents. I can go holler at this organization and, you know, be able to work my way up then and there. Now, granted, there's only and I, and I made this clear. Sure, there's only 32 of these opportunities. So it's very limited in comparison to the real world. But that's I mean, that's happened. That 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 has happened in NFL circles where guys are position coaches um, for one team and then they become a coordinator for another franchise. It, it doesn't necessarily you're right. I mean, the owner can decide whether a guy moves up or not, but that person individually can say, OK, I'll quit or I'll just go interview for this team and get the position I want. Right. But what I'm saying in rebuttal to that is that. Mm-hmm. Nobody. The problem, the, the 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 whole problem is, is that they're making it seem like there are no, there's no way he can transfer to. There's no way he could transfer to. Like we said, Eric Bay Bay who? Bay, There's no there. Uh, the media, the owners, whoever you want to peg it on, they make it seem they're saying that I. Eric Bieniemy is not a coach right now mm. because mm. they saying that I would rather Matt Rule than Eric Bieniemy because mm-hmm. Matt Rule is a better coach than uh, a better coach for us than right. Eric Bieniemy is. So right. I so the initial the whole problem is is that black coaches aren't getting a shot to be coaches in the league. The re- yes, that, exactly. the response the response that owners are giving is is that said black coach doesn't meet our criteria. That's why we're not hiring them. We're giving them interviews. They're getting interviews. But right. we're not hiring we're not hiring them because they don't fit what we're trying to do. They're not the best candidate for our position. Okay. So how do we change that? Because that's the reason why they're saying black coaches aren't being hired. Mm. Well, we we going to find out if this thing works or not with this whole uh, oh, I could tell you draft pick incentive work. thing. That's my guess. It's not going to work. But yeah, my guess is we're going to talk about this two years from now. The problem, no, we're not going to talk about this. We're going to be talking about this for as long as we got a podcast because the owners who have the power to change things aren't changing things. Mm-hmm. 
So, you know, I, I just don't I don't think there's a I don't think there's a system you can put in place that's going to um work in the favor yeah. of more black coaches being hired. That, that I, I, that's yeah, my end game. I, that's my end yeah, game. Yeah, I I yeah, and, and, and for me to close it out, I, I think we're we're coming to the same conclusion. I think we're coming to the same conclusion differently. Um that yeah, they can they can they can implore this incentive program for draft picks. They could do that, but I I, I just don't see it long term being the you know, being the end all be all. I, I, I just don't see it. Um, I will, I will, um, I guess add to that and say black coaches, black coaches, uh, popping off is not going to happen in our, in our near future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The, the kids just rolled up in here. I see. So, What's yeah. up, Shawty? <laughs> she can't hear me. I forgot you got your headphones. Nah, nah. They, yeah. they can't hear you. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I'm gonna mute you, Trey. I don't know if you got nothing to say, but I'm gonna mute you because uh, I don't know how, how, how they about to go hand right now. Yo, cloak, cloak, just okay. close it. Just, right. Nah, I was gonna say just. I got you. Close got it. Close it out, man. You're, you're holding up the BX sign, but all right. <laughs> all right. Um, so first of all, let me thank everybody in the chat room. We appreciate you. Um, if you want to follow the Instagram account, it's at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. You can um, follow me at Maestro Styles and at Trey Frazier on Instagram. Uh, if you're on Twitter, you can follow me at Maestro Styles and you can follow Trey at Barbershop SPOR2. Uh, make sure you like us on Facebook and subscribe to the YouTube page for uh, Trey Frazier. This is Maestro Styles. We appreciate you and we'll, we'll see you next week.